Hi, today we're creating an animation kind of like this one and we'll be doing it with the least amount of CSS possible. So what we have here are a number of bars and each of these is made up of three components, a red, a green and a blue one. So that's basically having three elements stacked one on top of the other and then blended with mixed blend mode screen. And they overlap most of the time, but you can see that during the animation uh, they kind of don't perfectly overlap anymore and you can see a bit of red, a bit of blue and so um, yeah, let's put that stuff into code. So we're going to have let's say 40 bars and we're going to have three channels, red, green, blue. So that's going to be three. So the total number of elements is going to be Q n times P. Everything is going to be within the body. Here we're going to have a loop. So while Q gets decremented and is still positive, we create these horizontal ruler elements. And now for a bit of CSS, on the body we'll be setting display grid and our horizontal ruler elements are going to get some dimensions. So let's say a width 25 amps. We're going to max out this uh, width, let's say at 95%, which is 95% of the width of the parent. We're going to give them a height so uh, let's say that we're going to use something like that for the height. For some reason that didn't work. If I could use a keyboard that would be great. Let's also set a dummy background and let's also get rid of that border. So Having done this, uh, let's also get rid of margins because you can see we have margins on those horizontal rulers and we also have margin on the body. So we're just going to zero the margin on everything. Okay, now let's also set a grid gap so you can have, uh, we can see the individual. Okay, and let's also set place content center. And next we're going to want to set the colors on those uh, horizontal ruler elements. So we're going to want to have red, green, blue, red, green, blue. And to do so, we're going to use here in a style element, we're going to have a loop. So for let uh, i going from zero all the way up to p, increment this i. And here we're going to have horizontal ruler nth of type. And we're using nth of type instead of nth child because these ruler elements are siblings of the style which is before them and this would mess up nth child index. That's why we use nth of type. So here we're going to have every p element plus i plus one and it's plus one because nth of type, nth child index, these are all one based indices as opposed to loop index which is zero based. So here, when we pass this custom property to the CSS and we set it to the loop index, right? this one is going to be uh, a zero-based index. Now something else we're going to want to set is here in a style attribute, we're going to want to pass those n and p values to the CSS as custom properties. So like that and the same for the p, so this is going to be p right there and we're going to have a second very similar loop except this time we're going to go up to n we're not going to go every p elements like before but we're going to go after all the previous rows okay so this is basically um, this j is going to be like a zero based um, row index but for the grid index we actually need a one based um, uh, index so we're going to add one Okay, so having done this, let's also change the background. So we're going to use an HSL value and this is going to depend on the progress of the channel. So basically this progress value is going to be the ratio between the channel index, which is i, over the total number of channels, which is p. So here we're going to have that k progress times 360 and we're going to max out the saturation, midway luminosity. So the thing is, 360 is the number of degrees we have around a circle. So a full circle has 360 degrees, 360 coincides with uh, zero, okay? And that's basically how we have the hues 
we can, we have something like a hue wheel because hues are circular. We start from red at zero and then you get back to red at 360. So we have red here, we have lime, and this is pretty messed up or interesting, however you want to look at it. So um, if we max out on the green channel, um, that doesn't correspond to the color uh, with the keyword uh, green. It corresponds to lime. So you can see it in this table, how lime, this maxes out the green channel, 255 or 100%, but uh, the green keyword, this doesn't max out the green channel. So we're only at about 50%. Okay, so um, that's uh, interesting, mixed, messed up, however you want to look at it. Okay, so you can see, oh, no, back here. So here we're going to have um, 0, 120, and 240. Okay, so uh, red, green, which is actually the keyword lime, and uh, blue, okay? But each of these max out one channel. So the first one maxes out a red channel, then we max out the green channel, and then we max out the blue channel. That's uh, the whole thing. And we're going to want them to overlap, so in groups of three. So that's going to be grid area, calc, and as I said before, that J value plus one, this is going to be the row index, and the column index is always going to be one because we only have one column. So you can see how now they overlap and you can only see the one on top, the last one, the blue one. But if we set mixed blend mode screen, then this blends them and we get white so we don't see anything anymore. But um, let's set the background, not quite black, but still pretty dark, something like that. And let's also set a height, something like that. And you can see how they're now in the middle. Let's maximize the CSS and we're not going to add anything more on the body so we can just uh, collapse it for now and we're going to start with that oscillation animation. We want to go um, up to a maximum incline of let's say that that angle is going to be five degrees and we're also going to set an animation duration let's say something like two seconds. So here let's say we're going to have a transform minus one times that angle and uh, then we are going to have our animation so uh, keyframes that rotation oscillation whatever you want to call it we're going to go to something similar except it's going to be with plus so now we're going to have animation that rotation animation duration we're going to want to have something like an ease out uh, infinite alternate let's see it okay it's starting to look like something but we want to have slightly different timing functions for the three layers the three channels so they're all going to be ease out and let's go here so an ease out looks something like this the first uh, coordinate is going to be zero zero the coordinate of this point and then the coordinate of this point is going to have one for the y coordinate and then the x is going to be something between a 0 and 1. And we're going to have different values for the three uh, layers, the three components. Uh, you can also see it right here, how um, the ease out functions, they kind of flatten out here at the end. You can see these are all ease out functions and they kind of flatten out at the end. That's the deal with ease out. So. Like I mentioned before, zero, zero coordinates, and then something, and then one for uh, the second y coordinate. And then we're going to have a calc, and this is going to depend on that uh, k value. But let's see it with k for now. It's going to look pretty extreme. You can see it already. So um, what we're going to do is k plus one times 0.5. Right, so it's going to look something like this. But one thing I don't like it, as you can see, we have the red there above, both when it goes down and when it goes back up. And it's not quite the same because you can see how here it's uh, only red when it goes back up. When it goes down, it's blue. So let's 
change that. Let's actually make this up to 50% and let's get rid of that alternate. And now you can see how it's a red when it goes down, when it goes up, and blue when it goes down. Okay, that's much better. Okay, now we're also going to want to have a blurring animation and we want to have that blur during the motion. So no blur at the ends. So when it's rotated by this angle A in either direction, no blur there, but blur in the middle. So we're going to have a similar set of keyframes. This is going to be the blur uh, to filter blur one pixel. So here we're going to have that blur and it's going to be a quarter of the animation duration. Uh, let's make it just an ease out, infinite, alternate. So let's see it. Okay, it's starting to look like something. We're only missing an animation delay. So animation delay and this is going to depend on the row. So it's going to be calc um, j over the total number of rows n uh, times the animation duration and we're going to want this delay to be always negative. So these values are between 0 and 1 so if you subtract 1 then the delay is always going to be negative. And um, let's make it twice the animation duration right there. Let's see it. Okay, much better. Uh, now, one more tiny little thing. Let's set a border radius. So let's say that this is going to be twice that. And we're not going to want to have scaling both horizontally and vertically. We're only going to have that scaling to half vertically, but a bit more rounding horizontally. So yeah, that looks nice. And I'm going to leave it at this. I'm not going to tweak it any further. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, if you like the work that I'm putting out since early 2012 and you want me to be able to do more in the future, please consider supporting it. You can do so by being a cool cat and becoming a patron on Patreon. Or if monthly support is not your style, there's the option of a one-time donation. Or you can make me happy with a gift off my wish list. Or you could at least share this to show the world what can be done CSS these days. Because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching. The links for everything are going to be in the description. And I'll see you next time. Bye!